Welcome to the middle of the African bush. Join me as I, as I search for the famous Karula, a female leopard. This is Safari. Welcome to the center of Juma Private Game Reserve here in the Sabi Sand, South Africa for your live African safari. My name is Brent. I have Virm on camera with me. And as I said, we are searching for Queen Karula, who we had on the sunrise safari. And uh, we're hoping to find her again. The weather's quite strange. It's about 28 degrees Celsius. Um, and it's very humid today. And I'm wondering if there might not be some rain on its way later on and uh, you can see complete cloud cover and it's been quite a, a relatively cool day we've had a very cool october so far and uh, normally it's much much hotter but which means that queen karula possibly has been on the move uh, while during the day so we're going to start where i think she might have popped down into the moati river if she hasn't we're going to head back towards where we last had her and hopefully and the leopard luck is on our side. Now I know there was a supposed to be a fireside chat scheduled for this evening. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that due to uh, the weather and some other little difficulties. But don't worry, next week there will definitely be one, weather permitting, of course. Remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv if you have any wonderings or musings or VM spotted an elephant that I had no idea was next to me while I was rambling on to you. This, this finger starts doing this. Oh, Eddie is in the thicket a little bit. Now, the elephants, I've been hoping to see some about maybe a little bit more oh, that's about as good as it's going to get in the river rhine thickets oh, i've been hoping to find an elephant mud bathing since we've had a bit of rain and they have just been avoiding me i haven't seen any splishing and splashing and spraying of mud and i'm starting to feel like the elephants are teasing me because I can see even that one's been splishing and splashing in the mud at some point today. Looks like a youngish bull from what I can see through the, the trees. Always nice to start your Sunday afternoon drive with an elephant. Now, while our elephant's in the thickets, it seems like Jamie has got another elephant and she'd like to say hello. And from one elephant in the thickets to another, a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome on the Sunset Safari. My name is Jamie. This afternoon I have Jandre on camera with me and we're going to be heading out into the wilds of untamed Africa. It's a bit of a stretch, but semi-tamed Africa to go and see what we can find for you. So this morning, the lion pride gave us the slip and disappeared off into a very dense block. So I've decided this afternoon, I know Brent has been discussing the weather, as we do every day, um, to fill you in on what it feels like out here on a day in the African bush. Um, they could still be moving and in fact the number of elephants that have been moving around this area might also mean that they have been chased out of whatever particular comfortable spot they managed to find themselves in. I'm relatively certain this is the same elephant herd that gave Jandre and myself a little bit of a rev this morning on our way home. We were trying to get home. One of the elephant calves screamed for a totally unrelated reason at which point the female decided to blame us for the provocation caused and came racing out of the bushes with fury in her eyes. Luckily we were able to skirt around her and discourage her from coming running full tilt at the vehicle but it was an interesting experience to have before one's even had one's breakfast. 
little calf racing off to catch up with mom. Of course, we don't blame that female in the slightest. It's amazing the protective nature that elephant cows have over the rest of the breeding herd. It might not even have been her baby that she was racing to protect. The bonds between these magnificent pachyderms are incredibly strong. And off she goes into the thickets once again. Let's see if there's any more hanging around a little bit further along down the road. Otherwise, I'm going to go back and see if we can find these lions. I'm frustrated because we just missed out on seeing them this morning. In fact, so much so that when I got out to look at their fresh tracks, I actually think I scared them a little bit. I didn't know how close they really were and I just heard brrrr and then they obviously disappeared further into the dense vegetation which is exactly what I didn't want to happen. So now we're going to try and find them once again. Unfortunately, the number of elephants wandering through these areas might make life a little bit difficult. Okay, let's see if there's any more of them tailing the herd. Perhaps we can find the big bull. These tracks I've been seeing, I smelt him last night, he was in must. You can see these massive footprints on the ground. I want to see if I can work out where he is. And then, of course, I'm sure Brent told you about the possibility of the return of the migratory bird species. And perhaps he didn't. Perhaps he's keeping it a surprise. One of them has arrived back on our shores as of this afternoon. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. We're going to try and find one. Well, there we go. Apparently he hasn't told you what we've seen. And we're going to try and find some of them to show you them. Oh, and the classes cuckoo have also returned, and the African black cuckoo, a combination of <coughs> calls outside our house in the middle of the day, and then the I'm so sad cuckoo, which apparently is I'm so glad. I'm so sad. Well, let's see which migratory species we can find first, having returned to the Sabi sand once again. Oh, unfortunately, I think that was the tail end of the herd. Oh well, let's go and see if those lionesses from yesterday that were separate from the rest of the pride have decided to go and rejoin them. They might actually make our lives easier when it comes to tracking the rest of the pride down. Otherwise, I'm going to sit and strain my ears to try and hear the sound of the eight little cubs that the Inkahumas have with them. Now, the Inkahumas will lie silently all afternoon if they want to. But the little cubs are guaranteed at some point to make a noise. Hopefully we can use that to help us track them down as well. Right. Our tax did come and check up on the spot this morning where the lions... Ah, there you are! Where the lions had their kill and they had moved off. Let's see if we can follow their tracks to meet up with the rest of the pride. Hello, big boy. Lovely big bull. Here we go. That's sort of what I was looking for. There's a big bull trailing the rest of the herd. This isn't the one I was thinking of. He's not in must. And he's not as large as the tracks I've been seeing, but he's still a good-sized bull. Let's go a little bit back before he gets into the road so that we can actually be in front of him as he pops out. Let's see if we can calculate his trajectory exactly. Where are you going to pop out, mister? I would say if he keeps moving and doesn't stop to feed. Right, so it's important. I'm trying to work out where he's going to come out. But it is important that I don't then go and park in his way. Obviously, that's exceptionally rude. That would not be good manners at all. It's like seeing somebody trying to walk through a door and purposely going to block them. And we're not going to do that. We'll shift out of his way a little bit. And now we wait. Hello, big boy. <laughs> You're going to stop and feed just there. No, here he comes. Oh, he's beautiful. There's something incredible about being in the presence of these large bulls. 
don't know exactly what it is. I think it's just, I've said it before, I think it's their level of self-possession and comfort. They know that they're the biggest things out here. And as a result, they don't feel threatened by anything. They are just magnificent. Hello, boy. He might even come up and say hello. He's been watching us all the way along. He might come and loom. Hello, my boy. Aren't you beautiful? It's so incredibly privileged to sit and enjoy the presence of these incredible creatures. Bye-bye. Off to catch up with the rest of the ladies. Better move quickly. They're well on their way. So balls of this age, and he's not, I mean, he's still not massive. He's probably, I would say, in his mid-twenties, maybe getting up to 30, but probably somewhere in his twenties. So he's still not nearly full-sized. He's going to get much, much larger as he grows older. Bulls like him need an almost typically solitary existence, or else they find the company of other males like themselves, maybe to enjoy a little bit of sparring and so on. But when they do come across an elephant herd, they hang around for a little, I think, for a little bit of company, in a way. And also, of course, naturally, for the possibility of having a chance to mate with one of the females. Well, we head off in the same direction of the elephant bull, see where he's off to. Let's go across to Brent, who's got an aerial predator. And definitely one of my favourite aerial predators, oh, tired aerial predator on Juma, the African hawk eagle. Now, we can only see one, but I'm pretty sure the other member will be sitting close by somewhere. Terror from above if you're a squirrel or Franklin or guinea fowl. Now I saw my first black cuckoo of the wet season just now. I heard him calling but he took off before we could get a camera near him. So keep a look, a listen out on the Juma dam cam for the I'm so sad bird. I'm so sad. And then I did see my first European beaches. I mentioned on the sunrise safari uh, that my dad saw them this morning in Hoodsprate. Uh, well, just outside Hoodsprate. So I thought they might be arriving and they arrived this afternoon, but they flock flew over us so quickly. But hopefully we should see some. Now, that means so far on the cuckoo front, uh, I've heard classes cuckoo. African cuckoo, black cuckoo, and red-chested cuckoo. So there's still a few more to arrive, and I think James has managed to get the African cuckoo on camera already, but the other species are still waiting to make their summer debut. So we're just going very slowly through here. Now, the last place we saw Karula was through there. I just want to make sure she hasn't come through here. Our best bet is she's made a kill during the day and uh, she's headed back to fetch the cubs and she's on her way back. So I'm just going to check very slowly through this area. The ground can be a little bit hard around here. And it sounds like we've got an unwanted passenger. Let's see if Going up the hill, we'll get rid of it. Uh, Karula does like to use some of these big animal paths around here. It's 
always good to just check very carefully. Now, for the birdies who are arriving shortly, or who are with us, of them spotted back about 10 meters, them is spotted a snoozing antelope. A well spotted VM. There we go, a little sleeping grey diker, one of Karula's favorite foods. Good, it's so still. You can hear some hardy dark ibis in the distance. But other than that. Oh. You can see how the sky is darkening. Now, when you get this very still, humid weather and not a lot of wind, it generally means the rain is on its way. But just before it comes, it normally lets you know when the wind picks up. Aha, I thought I heard something up ahead. Not what we're looking for. And definitely what the Inkahumas might be looking for. We have buffalo scattered throughout Juma. Oh, and they're a bit nervous at the moment obviously being persecuted by the lions a lot over the last little while it's okay guys we're not in kahumas let's go forward a little bit So two buffalo bulls, Look a little bit young to be proper dugger boys just yet. There's still some soft boss on the one in the front. Probably find they've been separated from the herd during a hunt. It is so quiet. And we just want the stillness to be broken with the snorting or barking of a impala or kudu. Bye bye, dugger boys. So while we keep checking very slowly for Queen Karula. Uh, let's go back to Jamie and see how her endeavors are going. Our endeavors are going very, very well. And well done to Jandre for spotting our lions right there in the drainage line. Can you believe it? After all that, one male and one female, presumably a honeymoon couple. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, well, without any further ado, they've probably been lying there all day. I mean, I want to just place my head in my hands in despair. Let's go down to the lions. Well done to Jandre for spotting them down in the drainage. At least we have the answer to some of the questions we had to ask ourselves, which was, where have the lions gone? Well, at least we've got two. Yes, so we haven't ended our lion streak. We've done very, very well over the last few days with the Inkuhumas, or at least should I say the Inkuhumas have done very, very well for us. And they have not left 
the boundaries of our traverse area for a very long time. Hopefully that remains to be the case. Okay, while we try and make our way down to get a better view of these lions, allow me to just call this in on the Game Drive channel. Since nobody saw lions this morning, I feel a little bit better about the fact that we managed. Yay! Relief! It was bugging me. It's been bugging me since the end of the sunrise safari. Phew! Afternoon stations, one Mufuzzi, one Madorangala, in the Shkova just north of the big jackalberry on Gari Cut Line. Okie dokie. Right, let's see if it is just one male and one female. Yesterday it was two females in this area. Let's see who we've got here. Because the wonderful thing about this is that they should or could potentially lead us to the rest of the pride. No, it definitely looks like just two. A honeymoon couple, perhaps. Which two now is the question. Okay, they are lying up in the back. That to me looks like number three, the Birmingham boy. He's always got those patchy bits on his skin. Let's go see which lioness he's with. I'm trying to give them a little bit of space as we move in. Especially since mating pairs of lions, the male tends to be a little bit more protective over the female. But luckily for us out here in the Sabi sand, our lions are incredibly familiar with the presence of vehicles. And as we come through, he's barely lifting his head. Hello, boy. Hello, Porvin, who is nine years old. Porvin, you want to know how many lions there are in this pride. Well, Porvin, usually we see th five adult females in the pride and eight tiny little cubs. And then the males, who aren't really part of the pride, but they're dominant over the pride. So they often, they spend a lot of time with the females, sometimes coming to mate with them, sometimes coming to share their kills. The males, there are four of them. So all together, that makes five lionesses, eight cubs. Are you counting with me, Porvin? Five lionesses, eight cubs, that's 13 lions plus four males is 17 lions in total that we could see all together in this particular spot. But usually the males aren't all together. They usually spread out because they've got a huge territory that they have to go and patrol and make sure that it's kept safe from other male lions. So we don't usually see them all together. But we do see them when they come, especially now, which is what's happening at the moment, is he's decided, or the female's coming into heat, which means she's able to make babies. And he's taken her and separated her from the rest of the pride so that they can mate. So I assume that's what these two are up to. And, and on that note, it's probably the young lioness. When we get round to see the front of her face, it's most likely her. Brent and myself think that Amber Eyes is pregnant. She could still be mating. Um, the, the hormones do occasionally get confused. So we could still see her mating, but I think that I think that's the case which means it's more likely to be the youngest lioness of the Inkuhuma Pride. Uh, James Dungans asked a question that I asked of the viewers a couple of weeks ago, which was when, I think it was with Kurula, we were talking about when she was moving den sites and we were wondering if she, we had them picked out. And James Dungans asked a really good question, which is, do the lionesses or the big female big cats have a place picked out when they're ready to have their litter or is it a spur of the moment thing? They definitely scope out previous den sites. They also definitely know previous places that they've used in the past as den sites. My thoughts are... Because, I mean, when we saw Karula giving birth to her litter, she was spending a lot of time in the exact place that she did actually go on and give birth in. I think they, they try and choose as carefully as possible, but I think they probably have a couple of contingency plans so that if the labor process does take them by surprise, then they can just pop into the closest one. But they definitely, definitely have places that they use regularly. 
What I would like to know, particularly, let's say, with a pride of lions like the Inkahumas, because a pride of lions can be in one territory for generations and generations. Do the females actually pick out a spot themselves um, that they might have been raised in when they were cubs? Will they reuse den sites? Kind of like sea turtles. You know the way sea turtles always go away? <laughs> sea turtles always return to the beach that they hatched on to give to lay their own eggs. Stop being so persistent. Silly fly. Go to the lions. There's a whole there's a couple of lions there. Go over there. They're much nicer targets than I am. I'd love to know that. Or Karula, for example. Denning cubs in places where she herself was denned. Makes sense to me that they would use tried and trusted places. She's breathing quite heavily. It is unbelievably humid today. It's very close and sort of sweaty weather. That might be why. She's also got quite a full belly from the buffalo that she was consuming yesterday. And maybe even from the few times she's tried to escape her suitor. The youngest, the youngest lioness in particular seems to meet the advances of the males with a certain degree of reluctance. Like she doesn't quite know. She doesn't really want to be in their company and she'd really quite prefer to be with the rest of the pride. Which has resulted in quite a few squabbles while we've been watching them over the last few weeks. Often she's turned around and smacked the male that's been blocking her path. Oh, number three finally gets his day, presumably. After losing out the last time to number four, who is slightly larger, he seems to have managed to score the company of a lady this time around. They might also just be together. Um, she might not be in full estrus. He might be courting her. He might have got the wrong idea and decided to block her from moving with the rest of the pride. Chances are, though, it's his doing that she is separate. It would not be by her design. It was amazing. We were going through, Brent was going through some of his old photos earlier today. Oh, look, is he, what's he doing with his mouth? Dreaming. Brent was going through some of his old photos today, and one of them was one of the Birmingham boys a couple of months ago. And I mean, I know we've talked about the drastic change over the years since they first arrived. But my goodness, they've changed a lot in the last few months. Particularly this gentleman. He's still, to me, the smallest of the group. With his patchy skin condition. Not a threat to him in any way or shape or form. Bill, you were asking about male lions, and of course one of the most famous group of male lions were the Savo male lions. You were saying, is it true that they did not have manes? I've heard that as well, Bill. That was my understanding of the Tsavo man-eaters. I don't think it's all of the Tsavo lions. I think there are definitely lions in Tsavo that have manes, but the famous man-eaters that sort of dogged the footsteps of the railway workers and the railway builders and were hunted for a very, very long time. As far as I know, when they were finally caught, they were youngish males, but they didn't have full manes. I don't know if they might have had slightly fluffy heads, but they didn't have full manes. All right, I heard something moving. Um, so it does happen. Just like you get females with manes, which is something rare that's been happening, seems to be increasing in frequency. Their testosterone levels are slightly higher and they just grow a mane. And you do get maneless male lions as well. And that was one of the reasons once put forward that the, the male lions couldn't establish themselves a territory because they didn't have a mane and therefore had to become man-eaters. And that's, I don't think, makes any sense at all. Lions are opportunistic, and human beings in the dark are easy prey. We've, we are far more defenseless than a buffalo, and particularly a whole load of underfed railway workers would have been a very, very easy target for them. The scary thought, luckily not a problem that we have in the Sabi sand. But yes, Bill, as far as I know, unless this is some kind of weird old wives' tale, as far as I know, the Tsavo males didn't have manes when they were finally caught. Although there's always a part of me that wonders how they knew that they actually got them. 
Aha, talking about old wives' tales and things of that ilk. Jason, you were saying, is it true that lions have a, a claw or a spike in the tip of their tails? They do have a hard, calloused, quite sharp end underneath that fluffy point in the tail. I have been fortunate enough to feel it on an anesthetized lion that we were busy helping with an injury. So yes, they do. There is, however, this Maasai tale, and it's one that has spread throughout folklore, that when a male lion is whipping himself into a fury, because of course when a lion is cross, they start to whip their tails, they thrash their tails, just like house cats. So the idea was that they were using that spur to whip themselves into a fury, sort of causing themselves pain on by hitting their sides to kind of get their blood to boil before a fight. That of course is total nonsense, but it is true that they have a hard nodule underneath their tail, underneath the fluff of their tail. They're amazing creatures to be up close and personal with, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we come back, but let's head across to Brent for now and see what he's up to. Well, we're going very slowly. We've heard another black... Oh. <laughs> ah, evil cuckoos, they keep flying away from me. But um, we've had a very good, careful look around that area where Karula was. We can't find any tracks, but there have been a lot of elephants there. So, I can hear him calling again. There we go. I'm so sad. Over there, I think. He's the one who flew away from us. He's landed just over there. We'll see if we can catch him. So, I think those elephants might have pushed Karula further to the south. So we're going to check the Mawati River next. Try find a black cuckoo. Now, it could be a new species for a few of our birders out there. Uh, remember to let me know about your bird lists and uh, if a black cuckoo, if we manage to get the black cuckoo, if he's one of your new species, I'd love to know about it. Hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv. Maybe in that leadwood, Jim. you Mr. Cuckoo. So the black cuckoos when they call they generally perch very high in a tree. Oh there he goes, darn him! I don't know if we can count that for him. Did he land? Yeah. Oh there he goes again. Oh, he's got, no that's not him. There he is, there he is. Okay we'll try and get a bit closer but he's Hello, black cuckoo. We got you. You thought you could avoid us. You're just making too much noise, I'm so sad. Uh, my grandmother refused to let us say, I'm so sad. She said he was saying uh, he's so glad. A bit difficult to be glad with that mournful call. Here we go, let's try and sneak a little bit closer. Uh, unfortunately the light's not great, but still I'm sure this is a new bird for a few people, so we will try to get a closer look. Oh, he's gone. He's gonna land closer. He landed in the thick of it. Got him through there, Vim. A little bit forward. Oh. Oh. Now, 
and he's still there. So cuckoos, one of their favorite foods is our caterpillars and inchworms, which should be all over the place at the moment. There he is. We've got him there, Liam, so just through that little hole there. There he is. Well, there we go. It's bird number 142 for Carol in London. Well done, Carol. Uh, the black cuckoo. Hopefully, a lot of you have been joined us during the winter months. Are going to get lots of new birds uh, during the summer period. So he's a bit far to show you now, uh, but when you're a bit closer to them, or the light's a bit better, you can see the sort of mottling on the chest, as well as the sort of little white windows on the, on the tail. There we go, the black cuckoo. He's calling. Isn't that so nice? So, hi Aaron in New Zealand. Uh, I don't want to talk to anyone from New Zealand today, Aaron, sorry. After what the All Blacks did to the Springboks last night, it was actually quite bad. Uh, I think one could say it was a massacre. But since it's about birds, I will, I will, I will respond. Uh, which of the cuckoos travels the furthest? Now Aaron, that's an absolutely excellent question because I don't know and I'm going to have to research and find out for you which of our cuckoo species travels the furthest. Um, as, a, as a guess, but I will double check, it's probably the European cuckoo. Uh, I think the rest of the, the cuckoos are intra-Africa migrants, so they migrate to other places in Africa. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure, I will double check for you. Now a friend of mine saw a very, very cool bird today and one we I don't think we've ever seen on Safari Live which is the thick billed cuckoo actually while we're here. Um, where is he now? A thick billed cuckoo. And uh, you don't see them too often. Oh yeah that's what he looks like there. So that was seen in the Sabi Sands. Um, I've seen them in the Sabi Sands. I've never seen them since we've been here. Let's have a, a listen. So it sounds similar to a uh, class's cuckoo, but it's not quite. A bit more high. So the one you can get confused with, the thick build, is the class's cuckoo, uh, which is this one. But it's more melodious. Oh, let me show you what he looks like. Very pretty little bird. That's an emerald green. I've heard them calling. And I've heard the thick build curling. And you see, he's even got a caterpillar, his favorite food, in his mouth. Okay, oh, sorry, Vim, I was a bit quick there. Now, Gene is wondering if the black cuckoo is also known as the ghost bird. It is not Gene. The spook fall or ghost bird is a grey-headed bushrike. Now, let me just quickly... Okay, so all the different cuckoo species uh, are what we call brood parasites. Now, Vim, are you looking for tracks for me while I'm talking here? So, brood parasites uh, mean they use other birds to look after their babies. So they will actually lay their eggs in another bird's nest and pick up the, the other bird's eggs. So they, they, they hatch and they, they often will raise this bird that's twice the size of them. Now, black cuckoo, uh, they are shrikes, are their, their preferred brood parasite. Oh, quickly across to Jamie, he's got something small. Hey, look what we've got here stumbling into the middle of our lion sighting. A slender mongoose. 
It's a mongoose species that we hardly ever get to see. They're solitary and secretive, which is why this is such an amazing thing, because now it's even stopped uh, to dig. It's searching out food. Unlike their dwarf mongoose cousins, they thoroughly are, they're entirely solitary and do not appreciate being seen. They are such secretive little creatures that half the time that we see them, we can't even get them on camera because they've dashed away. And now we've got the opportunity to actually watch this one going about its day-to-day -day life. And the only reason we're so lucky to be able to see this is because this is such an open patch and it's so far away that it feels comfortable enough to start digging where, whatever it's digging out. wonder what it's after. This bright red eye. Look at that, there's the typical black tail that is a diagnostic of a slender mongoose. Oh, and that I think is that. Let's just wait one more second. No. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Awesome. You can just see it moving about there. Very cool. Well, that is not something we get to see every day. I mean, you know, we get to see lions every day. Not that we're bored with lions, but we don't often get to see a slender mongoose. What's fascinating about them is how different they look throughout the different parts of the country. So the ones here are almost a yellowish color, sort of a yellowish brownish color, almost like our lions. Whereas the ones in the Kalahari are actually a much more reddy tan color. They're really beautiful. They're a sort of a reddish brick brown with a little bit, bit of maroon thrown in. It's a bit too complex a description of color. It's a bit overly florid, but you get the idea. But always, always with the black tip on the end of the long tail. Right, so we've repositioned to look at our lions. And it is the young lioness. It is indeed the young lioness. As she looked up at me, I could see that she doesn't have amber eyes. So it's definitely not amber. And once again, she has found herself in the company of the males. This, must, this is a whole new experience for her. Oh, big stretch. Oh, I love it when they do that. <laughs> I love it when they cuddle themselves with their paws. AJ, who is seven years old, let's look at the male lion's big mane so that we can answer AJ's question. AJ, you wanted to know if a male lion's mane ever gets thorns stuck in it. Yes, absolutely it does. Let's see if we can look closely. Maybe we can see one, AJ. Maybe there'll be something tangled in here. Oh, look, he's stretching. I can't see anything today, but we definitely often see the lions with thorns in their manes. Sometimes, AJ, their skins are so tough and lions are such tough animals. Hey, oh. Might have ruined a surprise for you. Sometimes the lion skills are the lion skin is so tough that they could actually get thorns stuck inside them, inside the skin itself, and not realise. <laughs> Brent's been doing marvelous work this afternoon. Assuming you haven't heard any of that particular <laughs> comment on the Game Drive channel, let's have a look at our sleeping lions for a little bit. tucking in for the afternoon. A really good way to spend a Sunday afternoon, I feel. Speaking of good ways to spend a Sunday afternoon, I was going to make plaster of... Oh, hold on. Hello, girl. Ah, oh, there we go. Another comfortable spot. I'll tell you about what I had planned for this afternoon at another time. In the meantime, I'm sure you're all very excited about the surprise with Brent. Let's go and see what he has found. <laughs> it is the Queen of Juma, Karula. Um, with all the elephants, we predicted that she might move into the Mawati River. And we were driving down the Mawati, talking about cuckoos. And then I literally, as we linked across to Jamie, we found the tracks in the riverbed. 
and I had my head off the side of the vehicle, watching, watching, watching the tracks, and the tracks disappeared. And I said, oh, Vim, did the tracks go your side? He says, no, there she is. I said, what, the tracks? He's like, no, no, there she is, lying right next to us. You can make your way straight here, I'm the only station. I'd recommend coming here first, she is probably going to move south. Now what she's actually watching is there's a herd of elephants about 50 meters from her. So she's just watching, making sure the eddies don't come this way. Now, there could be quite a few impala. I can't see through the thickets where she's looking. I can only just make out elephants through the, through the bush. I don't know. It doesn't look like she's had any success in, in her hunting so far. I think she is going to get up and move. And, and you might have heard me on the radio. I think she might move south. Unless she catches something, she'll start heading back towards the cubs. So if she had caught something, that white on her chest, there might be a bit of pinkish on it. Oh, there we go. She's up and moving. Oh, look, I love the way a leopard can stretch. Standing by. Copy, make your way. You can see there's those elephants. Now, if we're lucky, those elephants are going to make a move back to the northwest, away from the southern boundary. Yay! But that's literally just where her tracks came from. Maybe she got chased by an elephant. Christy says, oh, how I've missed the queen. Christy, you're not the only one. I know Vim and I miss her when she's not here, and I'm sure lots of people out there. Trying to see where she's heading. It's actually heading towards the elephants. What's she doing there, Queen Karulski? Oh, having some grass. No. It's not uncommon to see the big cats chewing on green grass that helps with digestion. Uh, Michelle in New Jersey says there's lots of impala for Karula at the Juma Cam. Well, Michelle, we can hope she heads that way. And she's taking no notice of the elephants. So there's an elephant probably 30 meters from her at the moment. She's slinking to avoid detection from the eddies. The queen of camouflage. Yeah, the bra trees actually, that wasn't a branch, it was a tree breaking from the elephants. Uh, Diane saying, Karula is quite thin this afternoon. Indeed, it doesn't look like she had a successful hunt this morning after we left her. 
but that could change now. It's going to be interesting to see where she decides to go with all those elephants. I think she wants to go south and, and, and west, but there's a wall of elephants blocking her that way. Where are you off to, madam? Remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv if you have any questions for us. Oh, stretching. Let's see where she goes once she drops down. Hold on. Look at that, we're going to have a shot of her and an elephant. Here we go. Queen Karula and an elephant's bottom. Now, I have seen leopard do this before and actually hunt between uh, elephants, so hunt in Yala or Impala that might be near the, the elephants. And may, her approach might be a little bit held back from uh, the noise of the elephants. Now, I'm going to try. Uh, you're holding on, Vim. We're going to need a little bit of speed to get up this bank. It is now mobile north on the western bank of the Mawati. There's also a Columbia and Law in the position. With her, I'm to try to get there's a good spot. So, especially with all those elephants around, if one of them decides to chase her, we need to come there she is. We need to try sort of keep with her as much as possible. Would an elephant knock down a tree to get a leopard that was in it? It is possible, it would have to be quite a small tree. Uh, normally if a leopard was trying to escape elephants, it's fast enough that she can just run away from them. Let's try to keep it there. Fortunately, she looks like she's moving into an area that's a little bit easier than the 
the ride she took us for this morning. Hi Brent, great name Brent, in Ontario in Canada. I wondering if we've ever caught a leopard kill on camera before. We have, we've caught this particular leopard catching a baby impala. We've been very close with a few others. Station's best access for Kula now is on Twin Dams uh, between Mumba and Inyala Road South Junctions. See how she just stops and listens before she's got to cross some open ground, trying to make sure she doesn't hear any potential prey up ahead. Oh, those lovely long whiskers. She's deemed it safe to cross. Just head um, up onto Twin Dams and then head north towards Chelepan. See, this is why she was about to come out into this more open area, so she stopped, listened. There's always a good chance that there's some impala or, or nyala or any potential prey around here. Now if we look at her while she stopped there to uh, zoom in on her back feet quickly for Jackie J. And there we go. And Jackie J was wondering if that was extra padding or extra long hair. Now it, it is hair but there is padding as well. But it's not extra long padding. Um, but there, there, is, there is hair there. But the skin's closer to the surface there. And that's why it's coming through a bit darker. You can see it a little bit on the front as well. Very, very observant of you Jackie J. No, no water in there for you, Queen Karula. Are you going to be the first, world's first wallowing leopard? I doubt. That would be very unregal. You can see there's some extra long hairs above her eyes. There we go. Elizabeth's wondering, oh, is there any purpose for those? They'll work probably the same way as our eyelashes do to a degree uh, as sensory organs uh, that if she is moving quickly through the bush 
whatnot and something touches that she might close her eyes as a defense uh, from a thorn or a stick going into her eyes. We have seen her with a couple of thorns close to her eyes before and that was probably in the attempt to catch something. There we go, Karula and a black cuckoo calling in the distance. Oh, no, it doesn't like that mud. <laughs> She's moving very slowly, very purposely, stopping, listening, looking. She's on the hunt. And uh, there's nowhere I'd rather be on this Sunday afternoon than with the Queen of Juma hunting through we're actually pretty much smack bang in the middle of juma now around an area called spaghetti junction now if you have a look here quickly sorry i, I know oh no where'd he go there we go and that's the reason the cuckoos have arrived their favorite food caterpillars There is a bit of water in the next pan, so she might drink there. I'm just going to scoot up ahead of her. I must admit, this pan smells more like buffalo and elephant urine than water. Well, Robert says Karula is his favorite cat. He feels like he knows her personally since he's been watching for eight years. Okay, let me just move forward a bit for you there. See how dainty she is, she doesn't even get her paws in the mud. Hey Firm, make your way. See she's drinking out of the little buffalo footprints there, so as not to have to get to where the soft mud is. Yeah, her drinking that. I wonder where she's heading next. Now she is heading towards Vuyatella at the moment, but I'm pretty sure she's probably going to encounter something to hunt on the way. Okay, she's gone right behind us.
Well, Cheddar Apocalypse would like to know whether a big cat's tongue is so sharp and it's got barbs that can cut skin. Well, it can cut human skin. It's, it wouldn't say it's, it's barbs. It's more like a rough sandpaper. Now, lions in particular are a lot, a lot worse. And if a lion had to lick you constantly in one spot, it would take your skin right off. Leopards, not quite as coarse as a lion's. But nevertheless, I mean, if you think about your domestic house cat at home, how rough their tongue is, now imagine that much, much bigger. Now, Aaron in Florida is wondering, are leopards and other big cats good swimmers? Not particularly. Um, they are able to swim, and uh, in certain areas they will swim. So one thing just remember about animal behavior, a lot of it's area-specific rather than species-specific. So, for example, the lions here really don't like swimming. And uh, in the Okavango, they're forced to swim because of the, the area they live in. And the same goes for the leopards in Gabon in the rainforest. They, they need to swim regularly, uh, whether the leopards here don't have that need. But uh, the only or two big cats that really do like water are jaguars and tigers. Now jaguars are incredible swimmers, they'll actually hunt from the water and they even hunt caiman, cro caiman crocodiles uh, and uh, taper while swimming. Uh, I've only ever seen a leopard swimming once, and that was in Central Africa in Gabon. As I was driving the boat around the corner, I happened to see a big male leopard crossing the river. Uh, he didn't look very happy about having to do it. Uh, Deborah, if you need to get onto uh, Twin Dams Road, around the junction, or around Spaghetti, Spaghetti Junction, where Nyala Road South and Batalia uh, join with the Moati. Okay. There she going to be a bit. Ah, there she is. Now she's heading, it looks like she might head back towards the Moati River. So she's zigzagging, and this is very typical behavior for a leopard on the hunt. She's checking through areas trying to see if she can spot any potential prey. And, which makes it sometimes quite difficult to track them or to follow them. Uh, you're back with us. Now, it seems like Jamie's having a bit of a gremlin problem, but she should be back online shortly. Uh, we're just slowly following Karula. She's about to go into some thickets. There she goes. So while I try to stick with her, it seems like Jamie's back. So let's go see what her plans are. We've got exciting news. Exciting news. I have left our lions for now. Uh, we will... Uh-oh. Better slow down there. Don't want to upset the elephant in the lot in the road. Be terribly unimpressed. The reason I am racing at high speed away from the lions and up towards the boundary is that exciting times. Quarantine has been spotted. How exciting is that on cheetah plains? Oh, here's the drag mark for the buffalo. Must be. This must be where the hyenas dragged it away from yesterday. Right, so quarantine, the male leopard is on cheetah plains. I do want to race there because I have a feeling we might need to go in and out without getting rained upon. So my plan is to race as quickly as possible in that direction. I don't really want to get caught on cheetah plains in the rain. And it is meant to get, the chance of rain is meant to get a little higher as we go later into the afternoon. So for now, I've left our lions who didn't seem too keen on doing much. 
apart from the odd twitch. Hello, Elise. Would you mind if I come through? Uh, keep coming, she's now still heading north in the Milwaukee. Oh, little one. I can't resist an elephant. I know we're meant to be rushing to a leopard, but oh, we're just too cute, this little one. Couldn't drive past this. It's something so wonderful. What are you doing? <laughs> Trunk wasn't working so well, so you decided to bite directly off the tree, huh? Oh, it's a tough thing, a baby elephant. The coordination's not quite there. Not like Mum, who can smoothly wrap her trunk around a branch and rip it up. Brayden, who is a 10 years old. My goodness, we've got lots of kids watching this afternoon. Our Brayden, as this big female comes up to us. Hello, big girl. Hello. Ah, I see. Hello, it's all right. Brayden, sorry. Just making sure that this elephant isn't going to cause any nonsense with its mouth full of root. Hello, it's all right. It's okay, big girl. Brayden, yes, elephants are very, very protective over their little babies. If something is hunting a calf, then the whole herd will come and try and protect it. Mothers, aunts, sisters, cousins, the whole herd, not just the calf's mom. That's the amazing thing about elephants, is that the herd will come together and will protect them. The other amazing thing about elephants is, particularly this herd, is going to start walking straight towards those lions, and there's actually a very, very good chance they're going to chase them away. So even, Braden, even when a predator isn't hunting a calf, even when they're just wandering about, going about their daily business, elephants still get cross and still chase them away, whether it's lions that could actually hunt an elephant or a wild dog which absolutely would never be a threat to them. Elephants get so cross when they see predators. And they constantly band together and start chasing them away. Okay, our Ellie's have moved into some dense vegetation and I'm champing at the bit to go and see quarantine. I've only seen him once in the entire time I've been working here. I arrived just at the point where quarantine, quarantine by the way, is the son of the wonderful Queen Karula that you've been watching with Brent. Now, what was I saying? Oh, can you believe I arrived just after quarantine and Kunuma dispersed away from Juma. I saw Kunuma twice, very briefly, he's, who is quarantine's brother, and then I saw, I've only seen quarantine once. I'm very excited to see which particular, he's on a kill as well, which is very exciting. I don't know what kill it is. Andrew did tell me, but I was so excited by the prospect of quarantine that I wasn't actually listening properly. But let us trundle on our way there. Come through, yeah? Okay, welcome back. We're still with Karula. And fortunately, Jamie seems to be having a few technical difficulties. We are now waiting for her to come out of the thicket that we couldn't follow through. And VM said he saw her just there. She's right behind this thicket here. So we had to do a bit of guesswork to see where she was going to pop out. And it looks like we guessed right. Isn't that lucky? Wow. Skillful. There she comes. Henry, if you come back up onto Tim Dams, I think she's going to go drink at the pan.
Standing by. We're at Chelepan, um, which is at the junction of Pangolin Track, Twin Dams Road. So it looks like she might have spotted something or heard something. Back a little bit. watching Karula. Oh, she's running. There's something there. There's something in these thickets in front of us. It could be in Yala. Station at Chelepan, come in. Can you see him? Yeah. Stations, she's just run into the thickets. I think there could be a dike or something in here. Uh, just to the south of Chelepan. She could have seen something. We've lost sight of it. She went in there, so I'm just having a quick peek around the corner, so to speak. Watch your head there, Vian. Yeah. There she is. There's a diker right in front of her. I just come a little bit further to the south of the pan. She's about 10 meters away from a diker. Okay, Vian, you see that? Okay, you got right on it there. The dike is on the other side. She's just to the left of it. So she, no, she she just disappeared into this little hole here, and it looked like a diker over there. Okay, we're just keeping quiet now. There she is, there she is, look at that. Look at that stalk. Now, I saw a diker just sort of walking calmly, feeding. I don't think it spotted her. I've lost sight of the diker, it moved into the thickets there. I mean, she is literally moving a muscle at a time. how she's flattened her ears. Now, leopards are incapable of incredible bursts of speed, about 24 meters per second. And you can only keep that up for about five meters or six meters or so. So they generally have to be very close before they pounce. But just from the way her body's moving, I think she could be quite close to pouncing. See how she almost seems to be coiling Look, 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 look. There's a slender mongoose there as well. But I don't know if that, I don't think that's what she's hunting. There she goes. She's got the tiger. She got it. You heard that. Let's get in there. She's got it. She's got it. She's got it. 
So it's the same Daika we saw her stalking. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Go well done, Queen Karula. And so you see how she grabbed it quickly. She's had to stop that distress call. And that distress call will, will bring in any other predators. So like hyenas. And you saw that incredible speed. Now, sorry guys, I know this is distressing for some of you. If you are a little bit of sensitive, uh, please don't watch. Um, what you can do is just turn off for now, especially don't listen to the sound uh, if the diker does start making a noise. But this is nature and uh, that diker is going to provide a meal for Karula and her two cubs. And Brent from Canada was just asking, do we ever see leopards take down animals? Well, there we go, Brent. Right now, uh, a brand new viewer. You're very lucky. We don't get to see this very often. Yes, as Vim said, she, she hasn't got the best grip on it, so it might get away, but I think she's got, those canines will sink into the, the vertebra there. So let's see if we can go a little bit forward, Vim. In my excitement, I caught a stump. There we go. Let's uncatch the stump. Here, a little click click. I'm just going to take a quick photo or two. As I said, I know this could be distressing for some of you, uh, but this is nature and this is live, so we cannot script what happens and just be feel very privileged that we're lucky enough to see. This is not something people get to see very, very often. Another exciting thing is that because she's caught this, she's going to bring the cubs back here. And she's dragging it straight towards us. Pulling it right in front of our vehicle. Isn't this incredible? Now, she's right on the edge of the Mawachi River. There's wonderful places for her to be able to hoist this kill now. As you can see, the diker is still alive. 
kicking is becoming a little bit less frantic. Now, Cat in Tampa is wondering why she doesn't use her paws and claws. Well, Cat, with a small prey like this, it's, it's not necessary. She might have to let go and change. And you'd be amazed at how some of these would be able to escape. There she goes again. Okay. I'm pretty sure she's going to take up a tree around here. We're going to stick with her. Let's wait and see. You can see those kicks getting a little bit more feeble. It's nearly over. Isn't this incredible? This is not something people get to see ever. Uh, and we're lucky enough to share this with you live from the middle of the African bush. Wherever you might be, you've just seen the queen of Juma, Karula. Ada, she's still just um, waiting for it to stop kicking, I think, before she drags it. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea to wait in the drainage line below. That there's a lot of nice jackalberries there she might hoist into. Okay, there we go, she's dragging it again. And we'll see where she goes. Is she going back? VM said she's changed direction. I've got a bit of a problem with the vehicle there. Okay, got to do it. Sorry guys. I've got a I'm not sure what's happening with my tire. Okay, so it looks like she dragged that into this little drainage system here. I'm afraid my, my car is not going to be able to move through it. I need to actually have a look what's wrong with it. So she's taking it in there somewhere. I think that's exactly what happened. I think we might have bent a steering rod and I can't turn. <laughs> I just need to have a look. Is that wheel turning at all? Yeah, this one's standing like that. Unfortunately, we can't move the vehicle without risk of actually damaging it quite seriously. Um, <laughs> not much I can say. <laughs> it does happen. We are alive in the middle of the bush. And steering rods, they put them in silly places. But we did get to see Karula take down a diker. <laughs> um, i got an ultra plan. What I'm going to do next... Uh, 
And we just said, or we're going to tech leave. Um, sorry about this, guys. Um, we're going to try to get sorted as quickly as possible. Uh, how, I'm not quite sure yet. And what we can do is maybe ask Alex to bring out Wendy. Um, and, and we'll try and make a plan from there. We might have to tow this vehicle. Actually, and we might have to, I don't know what we're going to do. We might not be able to tow this vehicle with braking. We, we, might, we might need to bring a trailer. Uh, <laughs> okay, but we... We're gonna we're gonna figure all this stuff out. Hopefully we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, I'm afraid we're gonna have to go across to Tech Loop. So unfortunately, we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush. But our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully, we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties, that's one of the things about being alive and in the bush, but our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly.
Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush. But our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you.
So unfortunately, we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush. But our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully, we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around, madly trying to fix it, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush. But our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can.
Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties that's one of the things about being alive and in the bush but our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me hopefully we'll be back with you shortly Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around, madly trying to fix it, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties, that's one of the things about being alive and in the bush, but our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly.
Sorry about this, everybody. Perhaps something has pushed over the Gari repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around, madly trying to fix it, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush, but our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gari repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around, madly trying to fix it, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you.
So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties. That's one of the things about being alive and in the bush. But our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you live safaris from the middle of the African bush is not always the easiest task in the world. But we will be back up and stick with us, because you never know what might be on your screen when we return to you. So unfortunately we experienced some tech difficulties, that's one of the things about being alive and in the bush, but our tech crew is on it and not asleep like the lions behind me. Hopefully we'll be back with you shortly. Sorry about this everybody, perhaps something has pushed over the Gauri repeater, just like the elephants have pushed over this marula tree. Our technical team is rushing around madly trying to fix it and we'll be back with you as soon as we can.
Hi everyone, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but please bear with us. Our engineering department and our tech department will be working on getting us back up and running as quickly as possible. As you know, bringing you... Hello everybody! I'm so sorry about all of that. Now the wind's trying to blow my hat off and my microphone lives in my hat. Thank you to everybody for all of your patience. As you may or may not have gathered, the wheels wobbled and then fell right off and we had major problems with Jigger, so we had to go swap to Wendy, then Alex had to take Jigger to go into a Brent who's on Rusty. Hope you all kept track of that. Hello. Please don't charge me. There's an elephant there, but I'm on my way to Karula. Luckily, he was very patient with us. Oh, what an exciting afternoon. We're so sorry about all of that. As you know, bringing you a, pr bringing you a live safari from the middle of the African bush comes with its odd complication which occasionally includes strange signal issues and the odd bent steering column, which I assume is what the problem is with Brent. We might even pass him on our way to the Karula sighting. Right, so, content abounded when everything fell off. We'd actually just found the rest of the Inkahuma Pride and their cubs on our way to go and see quarantine the male leopard on Cheetah Plains. Karula had just killed a Dacre, the female leopard that you were with with Brent. So all in all, it's been a fantastic afternoon. Unfortunately, things just went wrong and now there's a massive storm <laughs> that feels like it's blowing in. Wind is howling. Trying to hold my cap on my head. All right. Let's see if we can get things under control once again. Phew. That was a mad rush. And I forgot in all of the chaos when I swapped and gave poor Alex Jigger I forgot to bring my booster blankets, so now I'm basically sitting in the footwell of Wendy because I'm very, very short. So all in all, <laughs> it's going well. And poor Alex is probably somewhere driving Jigger with his knees up against the steering wheel, not, <laughs> not able to sit comfortably. Uh, Henry, I think Brent might be off the vehicle trying to sort out the issue. Copy that. Thanks very much. I think we're under control. Sort of. Shame. Henry very kindly offering to give us a hand. We'll probably pass the rescue team on our way. Ah, well, it's not the first time. Not the first time that the Land Rover's steering rod has been bent, and it won't be the last. Yay! I'm glad you're all very excited that we are back. I'm excited to be back as well. I'm less excited to be rained upon, but going to see Queen Karula with her fresh Dacre kill will make it all worthwhile. And she's worked hard today. From this morning on the Sunrise Safari when Brent... Ow! Ouch. <laughs> when, when Brent was searching for it, she was hunting. Oh, interestingly enough, we can link across to Brent, who is... Let's go and find out what's happening with him, and we'll catch up with you shortly. Hi. As you can see, we have not moved. Now, fortunately, we climbed under the car, and Opa came and had a look. It's not nearly as bad as we thought, first thought, so it's uh, just a bend on the steering arm. So what we're going to do now, Opa's gone back to camp to get some tools. We're going to take the steering arm off and then with a hammer and a spanner we're going to straighten it and we should be out hopefully before the end of the safari, uh, fingers crossed. But this does happen as we say, we are live in the middle of the bush. Now amazing thing is while we've been crawling under the car, we can actually hear Karula uh, crunching on <laughs> diker bones just through there. And she's carrying on, <laughs> no problem, there's vehicles with her, uh, and I think Jamie's going to try get there now. And, and uh, well, hopefully we'll see you again before the end of the safari. And uh, hopefully it won't be too dirty from being under the vehicle. Although I think that's more vim in Opa's department than mine. I'm good at breaking them, not so good at fixing them. But in the meantime, let's go back to Jamie as she makes her way towards the Queen of Tumor. Making our way towards the Queen indeed, and let's see if we can see the rescue party while we are on our way. And let's get out of this wind as well. Right. And let's see if we can find Karula. All in all, a complex afternoon, but that's what makes this job so fun. Thoroughly unpredictable. We never know which way the afternoon's going to go. At least we found our lions. 
After a fruitless morning spent searching for them, they managed to fly across two roads and into their home spot on Gauri Cutline. All eight cubs are safe and sound. What have we got here? Where's Brent? In here. Oh my goodness. Oh, I see. Um, I wonder if he knows he's on camera. Hello! Oh dear. Good luck! Might actually even be Alex. I can't tell in this thick vegetation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing, it's okay. I've been there and I've done that before. Where's... I'm confused. Alex left before me. Now slightly concerned that they've got lost. Okay, well... We'll figure it out as we go along. Oh, dearie me. No hat, stay. Aha. Uh -huh. So apparently Alex does know where Brent is on their way to get a spanner. Oh dear, some poor chap is off the vehicle. <laughs> Disastrous. <laughs> we'll just wait, let's just stop here for a second to give this poor gentleman some privacy as he gets back onto the vehicle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there's the car's no. moving. I'm gonna take that as a sign. We can too. Hi everybody! <laughs> Sorry everybody, just gave me one second. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was it was nearly. It was nearly, but it's okay, I'll stop behind the bush. <laughs> okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> okay. Oh, dearie me. I once got stuck in a, a sighting in an undisclosed location in an undisclosed place in an undisclosed time with four white rhino all around me. And it was in a, not in a Land Rover, it was in a cruiser. And it's the, the, joint came away completely from the steering arm, which was fairly disastrous with, you know, that many rhino around me. Eventually managed to get off and in true bush mechanic style unscrewed the part because my Leatherman wasn't big enough with a panga or a machete and then tied it back together with my shoelaces and managed to limp all the way home with... Where's this cat now? It's just... Make sure I'm not driving past her. Oh, Henry, do I just keep going north into the Mulwati? I don't want to drive past a leopard, that would be even more embarrassing. I assume so, judging by the vehicle tracks. Alright, everybody, let's keep our eyes open. Nobody's come down this way. We're missing something. Lots of vehicle tracks here. Those ve that nobody's driven in the Mawati yet. Sorry, hold on. Let me just concentrate on figuring out exactly where this cat is. Alice, you want to know if we think perhaps Karula is the hardest cat to track, and the answer is. Sure, I think she is definitely one of the hardest that we've tracked in the past. And a lot of the, the gentlemen that we've brought in who are expert trackers have just shaken their heads when we talk about Karula. There's, she's somewhere here. There's so many vehicle tracks. I wonder if she's watching our goings on. There she is, there she is, she's in the tree. She's gone up into the tree. <laughs> with her Dacre kill. Well done, Karula. You clever, clever thing. Up she goes. The amazing Karula. 
proving once again why she is such an incredible leopard and mother. Formidable huntress and always puts her kill up in a tree. Okay, let's reposition quickly. Get it. Oh, no, no, hat stay. Oh, this is such a perfect sight. Hold on. Let's wait and see. Wait for her to settle down. Oh, look at that agility. Our dake is not a massive antelope, but it's not exactly a pixie either. I mean, that probably weighs about 20 kilograms. So, odd, 40 odd, 50, 45 pounds. And she's just carrying it in her mouth. Just think of the strength of her neck mu muscles. Here we go, settling in once again. So do I think she's the hardest leopard to track? She's difficult. She definitely is. She's got a unique way of walking at 90 degrees all of a sudden. I've seen a fantastic map shared by some of our viewers of Karula's movement patterns. And I think that is very, very, very descriptive of the way that Karula moves. Nope, that place is not good enough. On to the next one. Perhaps that will be better. She's putting it in a safe place, and I think now that she's eaten a little bit of the rump, there's a chance she's going to jump back down and go and fetch her little ones. Well done, girl. Phew. The wheels have maybe came off a little bit this afternoon, but moments like this make it all worthwhile. Now we can reposition. Isn't that wonderful? I think this might be as good as I can give you just in terms of where she is. What a beautiful, perfect spot. Ah, hygiene, very important after a kill. I often wonder whether or not the wrenching of the animals makes the dew claw uncomfortable. Now my apologies, my comms are slightly scratchy because it's just the way that things are going this afternoon. I think it's Jackie who's asking about whether or not it's true that cats have the strongest. Zaki, Zaki with a Z. Zaki, sorry, my apologies. Zaki, you want to know if it's true that cats have the strongest back legs? I don't know. I mean, presumably we're talking in terms of weight ratio because obviously an elephant would have massively strong back legs, but that's because they're massive animals. I think they're definitely high up there in terms of contenders. I'm just thinking about some of the antelope athletes of the bush. Things perhaps like Kudu with their amazing ability to jump six feet from a standing start. Or maybe the Tsetsebe that runs for long distances without getting tired. But then, how many creatures can we say can leap three or four meters into the air with food in their mouths? Massive kills, often their own body weight, up into a tree in the same way a leopard can. So I don't know the answer to that, and I'm happy to hear. Those of you who have access to Google, perhaps you can see what animal has the strongest back legs per body ratio, body mass ratio. I certainly think that our cats will be high up there. Much like Karula in this jackalberry. It's currently giving herself a thorough face wash to the tune of the African black cuckoo. Marvellous. Scott, lovely to hear from you on the Sunset Safari. I think, hope you are finding it as exciting as we are. You want to know what species of diker Karula has caught. And the answer to that is a grey or a common diker. That is what she has. So it's actually the only species of diker that we get here in the Sabi Sand. 
Um, they are, there's also the red and the blue dacre in South Africa. The red and the blue dacre tend to be more forest dwelling antelope. You might get to see them. You might get to see them towards a place called Marikskop, which is the highest mountain of the Drakensberg in this area, which is just a little bit towards Hutzbreit, so a little bit to the west of where we are. <coughs> Blue Dacre, the smallest antelope in the world, we get in the coastal forests of South Africa. Gorgeous little things. Used to see them when I went to visit my grandfather there all the time. But this is a grey or a common Dacre. And along with the Steenbok and the Sharps Kreisbok are the smallest antelope that you will get to see here. Queen Karula fastidiously cleaning her paws. Very, very important because she's just used them for all sorts of things, from catching the dacre to carrying it up the tree and burying the stomach contents. I'm not sure if she's cleaned out the stomach contents or not, but she may well have buried the spot where she caught it covered it in dirt to hide the scent. She's that clever. And as a result, her claw sheaths will be filled with mud and blood and fur and bark. And she will be making sure to keep them... Essentially, it's like keeping your vehicle well-oiled. Or any kind of tool. Oh, bless you, girl. A very good question coming through from Andre. Any idea on name? That's Tippy. 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 Kippy. Tippy. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> However, you wanted to know. Perhaps you'll recognise yourself from the question that you asked. So my apologies there. You wanted to know whether or not that's enough for her and her two cubs. The answer is no, not really. Not with two growing, one little growing boy and one little growing girl to feed. They're at eight months old, her little male cub, Rosana, is nearly as big as she is. Um, it won't be enough, but it's certainly something, and it's a very good start. Which is why Karula is so successful, I think, or one of the reasons why she's so successful. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at that Dacre's hanging leg, and I can't help but think back to X Ranger's comment about the the impala carcass that was left from Tundi and he described it as the world's worst wind chime and on a windy day like today I have to say I can't help but think of that so X Ranga if you're watching I did see that comment and I did I had to it's macabre but I did have to have a good chuckle shame poor little Dacre she's coming down and the Queen is off Ah, oh, unfortunately she picked the wrong side, or we picked the wrong side of the tree. Let's go everybody. Let's go in with the queen as she goes to fetch her gorgeous cubs. Carcass safely secured, off she goes. And Ellen in the Netherlands, absolutely. She will, the cubs will be able to climb all the way up that tree to fetch their prey. Sorry everybody, I just have to wait for Henry, who's been very kind in... Here she goes. Oh, she's just about to jump into the front of his, disappear to the front of his vehicle. They've been very, very kind in giving us the opportunity and offering help to Brent in his time of great need. Oh dear. I, I assume that Brent has to cut down some trees to to get out of there, judging by the sound of the angry panga. <laughs> Karula not bothered in the slightest. This is not the first time she's encountered such things in her 12 year life. She knows exactly how to go about dealing with it. And off she goes. Having spent the entire day hunting, her day is not yet over. Now she's got to walk back to wherever she's left the cubs, fetch them, carry them back here. Not Sorry, not carry them back. They're a little bit big for that. <laughs> Get them back here safely 
and make her way back once again. I wonder where she's left them. She's not going in the direction I thought she would. Sorry, I'm just waiting to see which way she's going. Okay, she is going along the Mulwati. Ah, oh, no, she's going to take us on a journey. Yeah, my dear. Oh, stopping to have a quick scent mark on a bush. Doesn't do to forget that you've got to protect your territory at the same time. Hard work being a female leopard raising two cubs. See, she's still panting. <laughs> I thought about that, Michael, and it's a very good point. Michael wants to know while we watch Karula scent mark a quarry bush with using her glands on her cheek whether or not the wind will blow that carcass out of the tree or is it too heavy and well placed it is heavy and it is well placed no it won't blow it out of the tree if it were a little if the wind were a little stronger there is a possibility that it would blow the boughs of the jackalberry and it might actually fall off luckily for her on this cold and windy day the aerial scavengers things like tawny eagles and battaliers that probably would knock that kill off they are not present at the moment they're not out and about standing by Brent Hey, Fern Brent, it's just Henry and myself. I'm sure they understand. Shame. Brent is just apologizing for the noise. They don't have a choice. Karula's not bothered. It's just one of those things that they have to do, unfortunately, to get Rusty out of. We can't leave her overnight. Even if we, even if we thought about abandoning the vehicle, it's just not an option. Jenny, you will have to come past here. We've got very good sighting, yeah. Copy that, thanks very much. Everybody's so polite. Henry's been so kind, said we're welcome to come past. Hmm. Sylvia in Oregon, very good question. While we watch... Oh goodness, this could get tricky. Sylvia, you want to know if we've ever known a leopard to forget where they've put their kill. Oh, she's going for a drink. Let's get up here. Let's not break the steering column. Thanks so much. There we go, James Richard. You were wondering if she would stop for a drink. I've got so much going on in my mind right now. I apologize. My thoughts are jumping from one place to the next. And I'm just trying to think whether or not it's worth risking taking Wendy through this dense vegetation. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> so there you go, James Richard. Yes, she stopped for a drink. Right, the question of whether or not I've ever known a leopard to forget where they've put their kills. I've never experienced it. I have seen them occasionally get to the spot and not remember which tree they've put it in. At which point they cast about for a little bit before remember, seeming to remember. But no, I've never known a leopard to forget. This is such a beautiful view of the water. Now usually this pan has got a hippo in it, now that the rains have fallen. <coughs> So I'm glad to see it's not occupied so that she can actually have a drink. <laughs> I love that face. It's such a typical cat look when they've got something in their mouths that they don't want there. <laughs> of 
got a bit of dacre stuck. Oh, she's very thirsty. It has been a hard day for her. You can see she's very cautious when she drinks. She Great, come in for more furry. Um, it's never here. You can see she is very thirsty. She's also quite vulnerable because she's so low down. And on a windy day like today, you can see she's not letting her attention lap for lapse for one second. Uh, Deborah Brent has a problem with his vehicle um, at the ingress sighting. If you, if that's what you're interested in. Yes, I was just trying to work out if he was okay. We, we just wanted to know if everything was okay. <laughs> I firm, I think it's fine. Um, there's a rescue team on site. Yeah, we just had a flat tire ourselves, so we can't come and help. <laughs> Copy that. Thanks very much. No, we're all under control, but thanks so much for your concern. Thank you, and thank you also for a wonderful flight. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm very glad you enjoyed it. Right. Sorry, everybody. Everybody's been very kind this afternoon. That was so sweet of her, making sure that Brent was okay, but she had a flat tire, so she had to, they couldn't come and help, and she was concerned about that. It's a wonderful community, living and working out here in the bush. It's amazing how the love of these incredible animals brings people from a whole host of different backgrounds together. Now what, girl? I'm going to come back to your meal. I wonder where her cubs are. Probably on Little Gowrie somewhere, would be my guess. Is she going to go and fetch them now, though, or is she going to go back to her food? Perhaps she isn't in the mood for sharing at the moment. Not just yet. She knows once she brings her cubs back, she's not going to have a moment spent with them. With her kill, at least. A stunning, stunning scene. I wonder how many leopards that would led would have seen walk past. A stop and scent mark on it. Alrighty. Let's go catch up with the queen. Thanks guys, thank you so much. Now the one nice thing, although the... F ah, that's interesting. I'll go into the nice thing in a moment. Let's head across to Brent, find out how the straightening of the steering column is going. Live. Okay, so we're busy trying to straighten that oh, steering arm by using a Tamburti tree. So we used the hammer already. It's nearly there. Oh, so I think we're going to have to try the hammer again. So, I mean, if, if, if you want to, there's a million ways if you've lived in the bush for long enough to fix. Unfortunately, we've got Opa to help. So we see here, we're going to put our foot on either side so it doesn't move, and then we're going to Opa's going to hammer it. Now, this is a very common safari vehicle problem. And you'll look at most of the lodges and all of our vehicles. These steering arms have probably been straightened oh, 15, 20 times at least. I think Jigger's had its steering arm straightened the most. Rusty at least three times. But you can see, well... Uh, if we didn't have access to a nice piece of steel, oops, like this, and, uh, and a big hammer, we would actually go walking and looking for a, a big, a big, probably leadwood tree or jackalberry tree to 
really bend it so there we go. Opal's looking for a tree. Okay, so while we go look for a tree to straighten our steering arm, let's go back to Jamie with Karuna. Oh, shame. Poor things. Not all that easy. No, I laughed earlier, but I do actually really feel sorry for them. It's a horrible thing, especially when you've just enjoyed this incredible leopard sighting. So now I have this situation where I'm stuck in the middle of the bush. I do feel really sorry for them. And the queen is on the move. I don't even know if I plugged my spotlight in. I was in such a hurry to get out and about. Look, Karuna's going to help. <laughs> Oki in Oklahoma has got an interesting idea. Oki's wondering if perhaps they leave a scent trail to their kills or where they left the cubs to help them find it again or them again. What a very interesting point that you have there. Uh, they definitely do leave scent trails but I don't think it's to find things. I think when they obviously they we know that they leave scent to to mark their territorial boundaries. I think Leopards and lions and the other big cats know their territories like they know, like we know a neighborhood. I think they know and they remember exactly where everything is. The water holes, the mud wallows in the rainy season. I think they know all of that and the good hunting areas and the den sites that they've picked as safe spots for their cubs. That being said, I could be completely wrong. I don't think we know everything there is to know about these cats all these creatures. I think there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. And there's a chance, there is a good chance that you could well be right. Okay. I'm making an executive decision here. We're not taking this vehicle through this particular patch of vegetation. I'm going to just plug in my spotlight very so quickly. She is going to fetch the cubs. I'm going to try and stay with her, but I'm going to try and loop around her. I'm afraid with us on skeleton crew and with two vehicles down, we can, and Wendy teetering, we cannot afford for that to happen. Oh, why is this not just simple? There we go. Oh, my apologies. We will try and catch up with her. Otherwise, we will be able to come back to Karula to at the start of the sunrise safari tomorrow morning. My apologies, it's just not something that we can risk. So what I'll try and do is catch up with her on Weaver's Nest Road, which is where I'm assuming she's heading. Otherwise we'll get distracted by interesting nocturnal creatures along the way. Ah, they've brought in even more reinforcements. <laughs> Good luck. Shame. Luckily, Opa is with them. Opa, of course, being an incredible mechanic. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I know I want to stop and look as well, but I don't want to lose Karula. I mean, I've lost her now, but I think I know where she's going to pop out. I think she's going to walk that path past Treehouse Dam to little Gauri and that will be where she's hidden her cubs. Oh look at that! I can't put my lights on them. That's so cool! <laughs> A Nyana bull procession! Watch out Brent, the Nyanas are coming. Oh, Henry, I'm not going to risk this vehicle. I'll take it round to double check for her on Weaver's Nest Road. Okay. Procession. A firm. Okay. A procession of Inyala bulls looking like catwalk models. 
stunning. Right. Now, the one thing we've got to be careful of as we go off in search of Karula, and one of the reasons why I'm not following her through the dense vegetation, is she will still hunt something. If she comes across an unsuspecting Dacre, or an Impala, or anything like that, I mean, we've seen it with Tundi with her three Impala kills. If she sees something on a windy evening, it's getting dark, it's windy, <clears throat> as we said, that Dacre is not really a, a belly filling meal for all three leopards and she will know that so if she does encounter something she will stalk and try and catch it so there is that chance as well and as it starts to get dark in that dense vegetation it's just easier to leave her to it she's got two growing mouths to feed and her own I think though we're probably going to find her on the treehouse dam road. I have to go round, she's cutting corners so I'm going quite fast. But we should catch up with each other soon. I wonder if she's where she's been hiding her cubs. Oh, oh dear. Sorry, Kirsty, if you've been trying to talk to me, I haven't been listening, so I managed to unplug myself. <laughs> Copy that. Thanks for all your help, Henry. Now, Sandy in Canada, lovely to hear from you on this exciting, if somewhat chaotic, sunset safari. Now, you want to know if I can perhaps explain to you how a female leopard teaches her cubs to kill, or is it instinctive? And the answer is it's, it's mainly instinctive. It's amazing the way that the instinct works of a female leopard, uh, I mean, of any leopard, sorry, of a leopard cub. They are very, very instinctive creatures, and already we'll, we noticed when at a tender age, Karula's cubs are stalking things and maybe even catching and killing a scrub hare, but that we never fully clarified. I think she's, I think she's going to pop out here. This is the big game path that she often uses, but you never know, as we discussed with Karula, she's all over the show. Now, one thing that leopards generally don't do, which cheetah often do, is bring home um, prey that is not quite dead. They do occasionally do it, um, particularly if the cubs happen to be with them whilst the female is hunting and she happens to catch something then she might let the cubs catch and kill or kill whatever it is that she's caught for them but it's quite rare they don't give them lessons in the same way that cheetah mothers do um, lions are sort of the same in a way um, they kind of practice their hunting skills with a pride often messing up quite a few hunts before they get it right but they learn on the fly as they grow up a little bit and the same will go for Karula's cubs I mean look at Sindile Sindile was hunting on his own by the time when he caught that dog that had rabies he was then put in quarantine for eight months and then released back into the wild ah! <laughs> storm blowing in and he still managed to he, he continues to manage to this day to look after himself though it is an ins a purely instinctive act for a leopard Oh, come on, Karula. Let us see if we can find you. I wonder if she's crossed already. Difficult to see leopard tracks in the dark, especially when you forget your booster seat and can't see over the, the bonnet. Standing by, Brent. Do you still have it? Negative. She was mobile towards Weaver's Nest. Alright, okay, I'll take a quick 
Panda that side. Okay, copy. Suitably impressed with the amazing rescue team and Brent himself and Viam. Seems as though they're out and about. Let's go and get an update as to how things are going that side. Well, <laughs> sorry, my head is buried. We are out and about and just looking for my cooler box, not my spotlight. Uh, no, we feel like we need a cooler box after that, but we are up and about. Ha! Ah, there we go. So yes, we managed to find the perfect Tamboeti tree, actually, is how we straightened it at the end, to get it really, really well straightened. And exciting. Hopefully we'll have Krula and Cubs on the Sunrise Safari. Uh, Jamie let me know that she had hoisted that kill, so I'm very excited. And it's amazing what you can do in the bush where there is, <laughs> where there is a need. I'm gonna say where there's a will, but uh, where there's a will, you can do it. But where there's a real need, you really get things done. Now, fortunately, I don't think that's the, the first steering arm Opa straightened. It's definitely not the first of ours he straightened. But there are actually quite a few different ways to straighten steering arms. Um, if you can actually sometimes, if they're not too badly bent, you can straighten them while they're still on the vehicle uh, by attaching a, a rope or a chain to the center and that to a tree and then reversing but that of course is not nearly as good as taking it off and actually um, straightening it properly but what an exciting safari queen karula makes a live kill i'm i'm literally on top of the world even though i spent quite a bit of time under the car Uh, it was absolutely incredible and with leopards it's not something you get to see too often especially because you could see where she was hunting in and around the thickets and uh, it can make following and actually seeing it very difficult but we happen to be right place right time and the right amount of patience now she's almost certainly off to go pick up Osana and Shungile so we Let's hope that they don't eat that dike too quickly because it's not very big. And especially if there are three of them feeding on it. Well, uh, everyone seems to be very impressed that we're back on the road. Well, I think most of that credit needs to go to Opa, um, who did most of the hard work. I, I was just his skivvy. Uh, but Yes, uh, fortunately, the, the steering arms and things like that, uh, although they immobilize you, they're not the biggest problems in there and they're not major damage. Uh, of course, uh, quite often with things like that in a vehicle, or especially them and I were actually talking about it, if this had been a road car, we'd be done for. Uh, but on a lot of the 4x4s, uh, they are actually made to bend to a degree. So if you do hit something while you're off the road, it's not the biggest issue to put it back. I thought I spotted a bush baby. Oh, it disappeared. Let's have a look from the other side. Where'd you go, little bush baby? No, he was yeah, I think he's jumped right into the into the into the thicket there. Oh, maybe we'll find another one. Karula! <laughs> there she is. She's on her way back to fetch the cubs. She's having a nice little paw clean. Getting this dike out of her claws. You can actually see she's fed quite a bit. Well, since I know you guys have seen it, but since VM and I last saw her, because um, she was completely hollow around the back legs, and uh, now she's not.
Now, I heard a question, I just didn't hear who it was from because I got distracted by the Queen. And Carrie um, I was wondering, is there a particular method for spotlighting? Um, there is, Carrie. You try to go as fast as you're moving, so your speed that you shine the spotlight dep completely depends on the, the speed of the vehicle that's moving. Uh, but you don't need to sort of stay too long. What you're looking for is that, that the shine of the animal's eyes that reflects back. And if you use spotlights for a long time, uh, you can generally almost tell the species just from their eyes. Now, of course, the wind's picked up. And uh, even though she has got a kill and is on the way back to the cubs, she definitely wouldn't say no to another kill if she was able to make one. I just better let everyone know we found her again. Stations we've got, Karula again, elephant, carcass junction, weaver's nest. At the moment she is static on the road. Copy, thanks. Okay. So, Carrie, so we're looking for the reflection of the eyes. You also look at the width between the animal's eyes. Now, there's, a, and there's an old wives' tale about a predator's eyes are going to be red. Uh, it's not. Uh, an impala's eyes can be red and a leopard's eyes can be blue. It all just depends on the angle that the light hits her, her eyes. Jane, at the moment, she's going straight south on Weaver's Nest. Oh no, now she's not. Okay, uh, cancel that. She's just heading now more to the west um, into the drainage. So if you want to go onto the southern side. There she goes. We're going to try stick with her. Oh, I managed to get radios and spotlights. Uh, oh, oh dear. Big mess here. Oh, okay, well, let's concentrate on the leopard. We can sort that out afterwards. Okay, let's zoot around. Okay, she's moving parallel to us. We're just going to stand by up here. She should be making her way straight towards us here while we wait for her to pop out. I know Jamie's also around helping us so we make sure we don't lose her. Uh, so let's go see what Jamie's up to. We are helping to keep track of Queen Karula. We were just a little bit too far ahead of her. But now Brent is just over there. <clears throat> and Karula should be coming through somewhere here. And presumably, she's going to... Well, what's she going to do? Is she going to take the road or is she going to take the drainage line? The mysteries of the evening. I don't think that before the sunsets, end of the sunset safari, she's going to have got her cubs. But we will be back bright and early on the sunrise safari tomorrow morning. And fingers crossed, after our disastrous afternoon where we never got to quarantine, hopefully his kill is big enough that when we get there, it will still be there in the morning. Where's this mysterious kitty cat? That's a lot of Impala, definitely not Karula. So we won't be shining our spotlights there. I wonder if she's going to take the drainage line towards Treehouse Dam. Aha! I think that Brent has managed to find her, so let's uh, pop back across uh, to him. Jamie, she's heading straight towards you. Oh, 
There we go. We're in infrared because she's on the edge of the light. She's actually just changed direction. She's going straight towards Jamie now. So she might pop out right next to Jamie. Let's just wait till I think I can see Jamie's light on her. There we go. Look at that. He's going to he's gonna pop out right in front of Jamie. Uh, she's going in, into the block now. I think, uh, Vim, I think we've used our off-road quota for today. What do you think? Yes, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jamie's more than welcome to follow her off-road. I think Vim and I, uh, we're, 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 we're not going to. Uh, but we definitely will be uh, checking on her first thing tomorrow morning on the Sunrise Safari. Uh, and you know what? Let's go across to Jamie and see if she's brave enough to follow Karulu in the dark. Now let us get one last view of the Queen as she disappears into the night. I'm not going to follow her off-road. I don't think it's worth the risk in the evening. I let her go about her daily business. And there she goes, melting off into the bush. Beautiful. What a wonderful afternoon. It makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Moments spent with incredible cats like that. I'm going to leave her be. Uh, she's not too far from the boundary now. Now, Selena, you were saying, does, does the light not hurt their eyes? Now, you may have noticed earlier when I was shining and I said there's a lot of impala there, which, by the way, is where she's heading now, which is one of the reasons why I really don't want to follow her in the darkness. You may have noticed as soon as I said there's a lot of impala there, I immediately moved the spotlight away. So it doesn't hurt their eyes at all. They have a reflective layer that human beings or primates actually lack. And it is called the tapadum lucidum and it reflects and bounces back light so that they can make the most of ambient light in a way that they can see in the dark. And that in turn also protects them from, it doesn't feel like if I were to turn around and shine the spotlight in your eyes. That being said, obviously diurnal animals have less of a reflective ability than nocturnal creatures, which is why their eye shine is not as bright. That's what we look for in the reflective light of the spotlight. And it also means that prolonged exposure to a spotlight will take away their night vision for a while. It will compromise their night vision and it will make them more vulnerable, which in turn can obviously either aid the hunters or seriously compromise the prey. Though we don't spotlight diurnal animals, that's one of the big reasons why we have installed the infrared capabilities on our vehicles. However, I'm not going to use them to try and follow through, not until we have done a full assessment of what's happening with our vehicles and what sort of condition Rusty is in after her bush mechanics fix. But no, it doesn't hurt their eyes at all. Even the diurnal animals, a brief passage of the spotlight over them is fine. We just don't sit and stare at them for ages. Oh, and just by the way, I said primates. I obviously meant diurnal primates like monkeys and primate and baboons. Things like bush babies, of course, as a nocturnal creature, will have that reflective layer. So just for example, I've already passed over Treehouse Dam, and I saw a good couple of, I'd say, about 40 eyes shining back at me. I immediately know that's a herd of impala, and so I'm not putting the spotlight over that area right now. Although that being said, the other evening, we ended up having the best mo white-tailed mongoose sighting I've ever had, and it was right in the middle of a herd of impala. We just got lucky in that when I passed my spotlight over it, we happened to see it. Well, another day for the Wild Earth crew and another exciting one at that. It is the end of our sunset safari. We do thank you all for your patience and for joining us. A big thank you to Jandre for spotting the lions twice, twice I might add and for his wonderful camera work, as well as to all of you for dealing with all of our issues and still staying patient and loyal. We'll catch up with you tomorrow on the Sunrise Safari. Until then, it's time for me to say farewell. Bye-bye, everybody, and enjoy your day or evening wherever you happen to be. 
Cool. So I'm going to ask VM to switch on the infrared because I'm going to turn off all my lights as I drive. So oh, Impala. And there we go. You can see them there. Isn't this so cool? But what an exciting safari it's been. Oh, there's lots of Impalas, lots and lots of them. Okay, we're through the Impala, lights back on, spotlight out, spotlight out. Now, wow, uh, and a big thank you to all of, all of you who stuck with us through the technical and mechanical issues we experienced today, but I'm still on such a high. Uh, we were there with the queen, the killer assassin uh, in Karula and she took down a young male diker and um, and we got to teach you a bit of bush mechanics along the way but very very exciting and I'm absolutely ecstatic that there's a chance that Hosanna and Shongile are going to be there in the morning. Hopefully they don't eat that whole, it looks like Karula's eaten quite a fair bit of that. So that diet is probably not going to last too long. Or who knows, maybe the queen, the silent assassin, will catch something on her way back with the cubs. Uh, Judy says, what an exciting drive. Thank you. Oh, well, my pleasure, Judy. I'm off with the lights again. I like this infrared stuff. Look at that. Hello, little Ellie. Bye bye, little Ellie. That's pitch black. I just spotted the elephant in the in my spotlight as we're moving. I'm sure there's a few more out there that we can't see. And the wind's picking up. I don't know. Do you think it's going to rain, Vim? No, it's snow. <laughs> Vim thinks it's going to snow. I don't know whether that's because we got to see Karula make a kill or because we managed to fix a broke steering arm in the middle of the bush with a hammer and a tree. But what a wonderful drive and we're coming into the last little moment of drive. So from all of us here at Safari Live and in particular from Viem and myself today, uh, thanks for bearing with us on that incredible safari and we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning and as I said, great prospects with Karula and Cubs and also, of course, the Nkuhumas are still about close by and uh, maybe they'll come down to the pan for a drink. Maybe we'll get a bit of precipitation overnight and uh, it's going to be very exciting tomorrow. I cannot wait. I'm one of those few people who are very lucky uh, to do what they love on a daily basis and uh, get to spend my life uh, with the incredible creatures of Africa. Mm. Much better than sit living in a city. I don't do well in cities. Have I pulled my earpiece out? Yes.